as shrouded is in one word massive there is so much to do in the past two weeks i've spent dozens of hours on the early access build and i'd say it is a must-have for everyone out there who loves an epic adventure with plenty of similarities to valheim breath of the wild and rust if you haven't already checked out my 60 hour review for the game there is a lot to talk about this game so ladies and gentlemen welcome to the channel my name is 4am and today will be your ultimate beginner guide to get started with the game in which I share everything you need to know about it. From the very basics and core mechanics to the game to building your own house, make something like this, hunt wildlife and treasure and a whole lot of tips and tricks to upgrading your gear and even unlocking the glider. This will be the only and ultimate guide you will need to get ready for any future adventures in the Shrouded. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right to it. All right, so here we are in the main menu. Let me quickly give you a couple tips which are gonna make your life so much easier in the settings menu. So first off, we have the resolution skill. If you're having some performance issues, you can always tone this down a little bit, but especially field of view, everyone should put this one all the way to the maximum. Not only will this make you easier to spot your surroundings, but it will also give you this much more immersive feel. With my setup, I had the best experience in the game when placing anti-aliasing on FSR 2. It would be great if you could share your settings in the comments down below as well, by the way, but let's create our character. What I really like about creating new characters is that the progression is saved separately or not tied to a specific server, just like with Valheim. So if you want, you can take your high level character and visit any world with your friends or maybe take one with similar strengths. Anyways, next up, we have to choose the way we want to play. There are three different options. You can either start a private game saved locally or you can start a public game also saved locally. These are amazing options if you want to play solo or single player experience and shroud it all by yourself without having to deal with server connection issues and save all the progress on your own computer. While it's important to know that if you shut down your computer, nobody else will be able to access the world. So all your friends have to wait until you start playing again. So in that case, I definitely recommend you to join an online game. Have a dedicated server host like G Portal. And this is where I come in because I happen to be partnered with G Portal and I can very much recommend their services to you because I've been using them myself for many years. They host my community servers for Valheim, Rust, V Rising, Minecraft, and today also started doing so for Enshrouded. They offer a super smooth connection for literally hundreds of game servers worldwide. The win right here is that if you use my personal ref link in the description, not only will you get a nice discount during checkout, but also support the channel. So I would say a win-win, very much appreciate it. If you're playing solo though, a local save will do just fine. This starter cut scene, man, it just easily gives me those Skyrim vibes with that nice atmospheric music in the background. But um, yeah, this is where we start our adventure in Enshrouded. So let's first sit down and explain the UI elements. So at the top left of the screen, we have our HP and mana bar, while right underneath it, we also see our rested. Combined with a certain comfort level, you will get a sweet rested boost accordingly. The better your base is equipped with comfort furniture, the higher this rested bonus will go. Next to that, you also have three food slots. We also have an action bar in the bottom and a compass in the top. What's really nice about the action bar is that with one simple click of a button, you instantly have access to 16 different items. If we quickly open up our backpack, you can see that this one already comes with 24 inventory slots. While right here, we have 16 more, which you can instantly access. So I'd like to place all my weapons in the first eight and all the consumables in the second. Anyways, we also have that compass in the top where you can see all the wind directions with important landmarks like your main objective, but also the shroud timer, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So now in the top left, we see our objective. We have to claim a spot for our base for which we get the flame altar as reward. So let's do that. You can also use your shift. If you hold it, you will sprint and you will see this nice circle with energy left of your character, very similar to that of Breath of the Wild. I really like this little feature, but very important. The first thing you wanna do right here is read this book. 
This will always unlock some lore. Right now, we don't really get a new quest, but some of these books, first off, give you experience, but they can also give you some new quests with possibly some amazing treasure as reward. So be sure to pick up all the books to come across as some of them bring you to some sweet treasure. Anyways, let's head to the mine to the west, as this is where you can find your first item, a torch. Obviously, this is used to light up the darkness, so it's important to know that all the items you have equipped will slowly lose their ability with a torch when holding or with a sword when dealing damage. So you want to make sure to save that a little bit, but worry not. This is a pretty small cave system where you actually want to use the full potential of the torch. If you go to the left, this is also where you can find a couple of these bombs. You can equip these when, of course, selecting it on the action bar. Left click to throw them. And this will already blow up the wall right here. We can do that two times to make a bigger hole in the wall. And look at that. This instantly brings us to a nice room with a treasure chest, which we're going to open for a sweet weapon. And we've got another book right here for more lore. So now if you press 3, we have this nice hatchet equipped. But very important, guys, you want to destroy everything you come across. Sometimes you will find these secret entrances or hidden rooms with even more treasure. Anyways, here we are in the shroud. We're currently enshrouded. So when you're standing in this zone, you will see a timer in the top of the screen at your compass. This one will slowly go down to zero. If it hits zero, you will instantly die. So you wanna prevent this at all times. There are different ways how you can increase your shroud timer or reset it entirely, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later in this video. But in general, you wanna make sure that you stay away from anything that can deplete this timer. So right now, if we're standing in this circle, well, it's not doing anything good. So you want to be careful for that. But here we have our first enemy as well. Nice thing is, in a shrouded, you can press tap to instantly snap on a target. You can also do this with your middle mouse button. So right now, our character's camera will be centered around this enemy. We can also do sneaking to approach it with a sneak attack, which is actually going to deal more damage. See? We did a backstab, which actually hits pretty hard. But um, another nice thing is that you have a dodge roll. This is going to cost stamina, but it will allow you to dodge most of those attacks. Get some nice advantage. Take out your enemies from behind. They also come with weaknesses, by the way. So let's quickly equip that torch again. As you can see, this will have effective damage. This one will also be effective, so it really doesn't matter what type of weapon we use right now. But it's important to know that when striking with torches, this will take out the durability much faster. It's funny that I always find a shield right here. This time, however, it didn't happen. So let me just quickly destroy some of this wall to get some resources. See, we got some wood and some stone. We unlocked some new recipes. But if we check out the crafting menu right now, this is where you can find all sorts of blueprints for a club or a shield for which we're going to need string. So we aren't able to craft this one yet. Anyways, this is already it for the little tutorial cave. If we get outside, you will find this return beacon. If we open up the map for a second, this is where you revive if fallen in combat. This is, in other words, your checkpoint. So always be sure to get close to these to activate them. Otherwise, you're going to respawn like super far away, which can be pretty annoying. Right here, we also have our first town. Log Keep. This is a place filled with loot. So keep your eyes open at all times because everything you find on the floor, you can basically pick up right here. You can even destroy these racks for additional loot. We even picked up some tar right there. Just take out everything you come across. And especially these little bushes, I think are very important to pick up because they not only contain plant fiber, but also twigs. See, we just unlocked a new recipe for the torch, which you can do with that stick. Right here, we also have a well. You always want to use that to scoop water. You can just click it once. It will automatically scoop up like five water containers. And this is actually one of the items you can use as consumable to get a buff. I always like to place my consumables in the secondary tab so we can leave enough room for our weapons in the first. But right here in Longkeep, you can find plenty more of these 
things you can pick up like mushrooms and raw lean meat. So little cooking guides. If you're sitting in front of a fire, you can select all the white items on your action bar. So on five, we have the raw lean meat. If you press and hold this item, you will hold it over the fire with a stick and then you're gonna wait for that simmer sound to release. As if you keep it on there for too long, you will simply burn it. But good thing is you will then get tar, which can also be used for different crafts in the game. Not very pretty, but useful when it comes to creating protection from the elements. Like pretty cool construction blocks. Right here, we also have a couple enemies with shields, which can actually block our attacks. This is something we can do as well though, and if timed well, we can stagger our opponent, easily take him out with the follow-up attacks. We also lost some HP right now, so let me quickly show you a nice way to heal up. We already picked up the bandage earlier, so if we switch our action bar, we just use that, and we will instantly heal for 4% of HP, which stays for 10 seconds, your absolute most important thing to craft at all times, which can be done with both the string and the torn cloth, which we found from this dude. So be sure to have a couple of these with you at all times. Anyways, after destroying a couple objects and looting in this area, we now have access to different consumables. They are highlighted with this yellow flask icon. They can be used directly. We have the grilled lean meat, which is a meat type. We have mushrooms and water. We also have berries. These all fill up different slots, but they also come with different durations. The purple berries only stay for 30 seconds while they give you plus two health regeneration. So I think an amazing one as alternative to the bandage. While water gives you a total of 10 minutes boost with plus one endurance and stamina recharge. I think an essential one to have, pick it up at all times. With mushrooms, you can boost your intelligence, nice for wizard builds. And with a grilled lean meat, you will get constitution. So if you combine a couple of these bonuses, you will have more HP, stamina and HP regeneration. But now you're probably wondering, how do I hunt? Because you constantly have these creatures running away from you. I think sprinting already works fine to catch up on some standard creatures. First, we're gonna take a couple stones and break all these bushes to get our hands on a nice amount of twigs. And then we're gonna open up our crafting menu. So guys, I can't stress this out enough. The bow, especially early game, is gonna make things so much easier. You also wanna craft a couple arrows with the twigs you find. While right here, we can also make a shield right now. So if we wanna equip that, you just wanna open up your backpack and equip. This doesn't even take up a slot in your action bar, which I really like. It will instantly show up at your character right there. So whatever you have equipped, a torch or a hatchet, it will always have that shield automatically equipped. For the bow though, you wanna also use that targeting to snap on your enemies. I think this is easy mode because you can automatically hit them. While this can make small game pretty easy to hunt, it will not always hit the target, especially when it's running sideways. So instead of auto-targeting your enemies, what I think is much more interesting is to basically aim for the heads, as this will also give you a nice headshot bonus allows you to take down your enemies so much easier. And of course, you will also save plenty of arrows during the process. But I think right now we are ready to build our base. So here we go. We've reached the location. So let's open up the crafting menu and make that flame altar for which you're gonna need five stones. If you don't have stones by now, you should be able to pick them up pretty easily. If you just look at the floor, there we go. That's already three of them. That's three more, so that's already our five required for this craft. To place it, you wanna drag it into your action bar, switch the bar and voila. Be sure to check your surroundings and search for a nice flat surface. Especially the borders can be helpful to do so. I'm gonna place him right there. And now you wanna commune with it as this will now serve as your checkpoint. So whenever you die, this is where we will respawn or of course, one of those checkpoints which we've talked about earlier. Be sure to have enough snacks in your tummy if you start harvesting resources. Especially honey is something you wanna pick up at all times because this can make chopping down trees and also mining for ore so much easier. It stays for three minutes while it gives you a plus 15 stamina recharge 
with our top one of the best food sources to pick up early. We just broke our axe. Well, I think right now we already have plenty of wood. So let's craft ourselves a workbench because this place, ladies and gentlemen, is where you can instantly repair all the tools you have equipped. So if we interact with it, it will instantly do that. And you can even pick up the table after that so you don't have to keep it at the same location. We can just place it in the base afterwards. First though, we're also gonna take a couple stones to make the foundation of our house. So this is where our honey is gonna come in very handy as we're gonna need a lot of stamina. But if we stop mining, we will recharge it super fast. Look at that. We can instantly start mining once again. So now we have 116 stone. I think that's gonna be enough to build our foundation. So let's get back to the altar and slap down our workbench. First, we're gonna make a construction hammer as this one allows us to construct anything in this area. Next up, we wanna make a couple stone blocks. I'm not really sure how many we need exactly, but I like to have like two to 3,000. This is definitely gonna be enough. Now you wanna press tap when you have the hammer equipped and this will bring you to the construction menu. So right here we can choose between one meter, one by one voxel objects. You can also make bigger ones like small windows or go for entire foundations, doorways and windows. So let's take the four meter foundation one. We're going to press alt and snap back into our building. Very nice. You can also use the snapping tool to make them fixate on each other. If you toggle that, it's going to be much easier to construct the base. I'm going to place a nice foundation around this one. There we go. Well, right now I want to pick up the workbench and place it in there. If you press R, you can rotate this by default. If you hold R and scroll your mouse wheel, you can rotate it with a little bit more detail, which I think is much nicer to place certain objects. Now we also want to make a couple of these rough wooden blocks to make our walls. You know what? Let's begin with a nice foundation in front. If you press control and scroll, you can switch between the material types. So I'm actually going to place three right here so we can make a nice entrance. Then switch to number two to place some walls. I'm going to place a couple just like that. And we're going to finish it up by placing a window right in between them. And we're going to place a doorway right in front of that. If you fail to snap it onto the rest, what's pretty nice is that you can just click Y and you will undo the building action. All those resources will instantly get back in your inventory so you don't have to worry about picking up those, which was pretty tedious in other survival games. And you know what? While we're at it, I'm also going to take some more shapes. Focus on the two meter ones. Take this one right here to make some sweet pillars in front so we can make a nice porch. And then we're going to connect them with this beam. Number five, place it exactly like so. I'm also going to place a couple on the side so we can make a little wall. Keep out the bad guys. I think that's much better. And now we also want to create a roof with the plant fibers. This is going to be perfect. We're going to need a nice amount of these as well. So first off, I'm going to take a flat roof, which we're going to place in front. Uno, dos, and tres. I think that looks really nice. Now we're also going to fill up the main roof right here. I think jumping already makes it pretty easy to place these. While if you have a bigger construction, you can always make some staircases to get a little bit higher. Right now, we're going to take number nine, rotate it and place on both the sides. And after that, you can simply remove the staircase, instantly get a refund for all the placement costs. So there we go. Our house is done. We have a little entrance right here with, of course, enough light to shine in. Well, right now it's becoming pretty dark. So the next thing you want to place is a bed, right? So we can skip time and add a little bit of comfort to our base. So let's drag it in there. We're going to place it in the corner, rotate it nicely. There we go. If you're playing solo, this will basically skip time. By default, it's going to be times 60. So you will have daytime in no time. If you turn around on the bed, look at that. This is already our call to start the next day. 
Before we leave our base though, I first wanna place a couple more objects to increase our comfort level. So we're gonna have a better rested bonus, but also a chest because our inventory space is becoming very limited right now. So I've got a nice table with plus one comfort right here. Let's switch from workbench to manual crafting. One, two, three, and there we go. This one can also be placed anywhere in your base. You can also rotate. And if you're not happy with the placement, you can press and hold to pick it up and place it somewhere else. There we go. Unfortunately, it's not possible to place this with anything inside. So you first have to pick up everything. But here we go. Now we can easily store all the loot which we don't instantly need, like the construction hammer and some other resources. Let's also place a fireplace so we can prepare meals in the base. Also a chair and maybe a bench for which we're going to need the resin. I think that looks pretty sweet. Now, if we sit near a fire source, look at that. We have a total comfort of level nine, which gives us a rested bonus of 14 minutes, which is much higher than the six we previously had. We also just leveled up. So what I think is an essential one to pick up early is also this one, the well rested. It's only gonna cost you one point, but if you unlock it, you can further increase this buff by another five minutes. So that's 19 minutes early game. We have sneak attack. I think it's an amazing one to deal 10 times more damage to unaware enemies. While with Lumberjack and Mason, you can make farming resources easy mode with the weaker tier pickaxe or axe. We also have quality gear right here. All tools lose durability 50% slower. If we go up a little bit, these two are amazing to pick up early as well. They only cost one while they increase your stamina by 10 per attribute point. So we're going to start with this one right here. As right now, you can see that our circle for our character is almost too big. So we can sprint for a pretty long time. Going to make everything so much easier. But let's prepare for our next adventure. Take out a couple bad guys. So let's first create some armor which can be found in a manual crafting, by the way, all the way down, wrecked shirt, wrecked trousers, and the boots. So we're gonna need two plus two plus four, in total eight strings, bam, bam, and bam. Trust me guys, the threadbare pants, which you start off with, comes with zero resistances. And you're gonna feel this when dealing with some slightly stronger enemies. Right now we have zero, zero. So if we equip every single one of these, it's gonna be much better. Look at that, 30 physical and magical resistance is gonna help out big time for any adventures ahead. We also wanna make a couple more of those arrows. And if you want, you can make a clap right here while the weapon we found earlier is actually dealing much more damage. So we're gonna stick with this one. Before you go, always prepare those snacks in the base. Trust me, especially with the meats, it's gonna be easier to soak all the damage, create a secondary flame altar. Maybe even a third one. Trust me, guys, this is an amazing tip I'm going to give you in a second. But first, we're going to travel through the Shroud, our next objective, to find a sleeping survivor, which is basically going to get you ready for any adventures ahead. So for this quest, we want to travel to the north, as this is where you can find him. At a certain point, you will reach this bridge, where you also see that ancient pillar in the distance, you can just instantly run to him via the shroud just like that, but we're gonna take another path. You'll see why in a bit. So when we go down the path, we are in enshrouded territory once again. And this is no longer the trial area. This is where it starts for real. So you wanna be careful for the bad guys. This is where we also find our first hourglass. If you interact with it, you will instantly reset instantly reset the shroud timer so we will get back to the maximum amount of time you will have available in this zone. Instead of following the road to the blacksmith, we're gonna head to the west. This, trust me, is gonna make it even easier to get there multiple times and also gives us access to a wide range of new resources, which are essential for, without doubt, the best item to craft early game. So you wanna make sure you do this. Be careful for the bad guys you come across and Wow, this guy has a pretty unique shape, but here we go, some more shroud liquid. And yes, be sure to also fell a couple of these trees, these dead trees. 
as they have one of the most important resources you want to pick up earlier to craft without doubt the best early game item. And ooh, sweet, this guy right here even dropped a sword, which might be even better than the weapon which we currently have equipped. There we go. So now we can right click and salvage this one for some extra runes. These are used for enchanting gear, which we're going to talk about later in this video as well. But enough about the shroud, let's get out of it and get into this open field. One more bad guy, but here we go. Guys, this is an amazing place to place an altar, as this will allow you to instantly quick travel to both the shroud and this little village called Rookmore. First though, we're gonna head to the sleeping survivor. And this is also very easily done if you just follow the road up here from the shrouded location, basically. Anyways, here we are at the blacksmith's location, taking out a couple scavengers. Very important, whenever you visit a point of interest, you want to keep an eye open for these the anvils in the center, as if you interact with them, just like with the workbench in your base, you can instantly fix your gear when on the road. But here we go. The ancient vault of the blacksmith. We have a couple things you can interact with right here, but most importantly, you want to open up the pot and unlock Oswald Anderson, the blacksmith. Also have the recipe unlocked for the summoning staff right now. But guys, before you leave this place, turn around 180 degrees and interact with the wall right here, as this will give you access to a treasure chest as well. Ah, we need a lockpick. Worry not, right now we can actually make one with the metal scraps we picked up earlier. There we go. But instead of having to walk all the way back to our base, now we can use the quick travel from the flame. But even better, now we can start hunting the scraps. So we're just going to use that quick travel, get in front of the Rookmore town. The crazy thing is, since we have our shrine right here, this also prevents enemies from spawning. And even better, you can interact with anything you have close to it to basically dismantle it. While we also want to take out a couple bad guys right here to get our hands on a nice amount of metal scraps. I think a total of 30 is going to be nice. If you have a pickaxe with you, it's going to be easy to break anything you come across to discover hidden treasure. And ooh, these rats has hit me pretty hard. Anyways, it was about time we ate some new snacks. But here we go. We just found a crackling wand. Well, you definitely want to be careful for these explosives, as if you interact with them or if somebody else interacts with them well they will simply explode and deal a ton of damage probably one shot you but still you don't have to worry about that too much as we have our quick travel or respawn point right next to the village Ooh, look at that we just found a forest longbow with 21 power Guys, you want to check out this specific location as you always find valuable loot right here. But man, this upgrades our regular damage, a regular bow damage of 8 to a lot more. So we can delete this. So clearing this entire town is going to become no problemo. Interact with every single chest you come across. Also pick up those explosives as this is another interesting spot where you can use them. First, shoot on the barrels to make a passage. Then you can also use your explosives to get through entirely. Or of course, if you don't have any, you can always use your pickaxe to get through. Anyways, this is where you will find a house for which you need a lockpick to get through, which we can actually craft with the metal scraps right now. But what I really like about a shroud is that you can also just make your own passage with an axe with a pickaxe on certain locations. Especially the weak wooden walls are pretty easy to destroy. So save yourself some resources and pick up a lockpick right here. While there is one more thing I wanna show you right here is that this is where you can find a very sweet spot of mining a ton of flintstone. So southwest of the Rookmore point of interest, this is an amazing place to get a ton of flint early game. So you can unlock new building blocks, but also new recipes for any adventures ahead. Voila, we already have 15, but it's already getting dark. So you know what? Let's get back to the base and do a little bit of resting. Right now though, I'm gonna craft that summoning staff with only one twig as we're gonna summon in our blacksmith, Anderson. You know what? Let's place him right there. If you interact with him, you can pick up some new quests. 
But even better, now we also have access to new blueprints. The forge, the charcoal kiln, which unlock new weapons and armor, but also a better axe, pickaxe, new weapons, and a whole new set of armor. The fur hood, chest, gloves, and trousers. Even better, now we can start crafting our own glider and grappling hook. The grappling hook is gonna cost us a couple more strings and shroud spores, but we can already make the glider with the shroud wood we picked up earlier. Look at that, 100% range, speed and stamina per second. So now our adventure starts for real, while we also have to make that grappling hook still. So uh, let's get back to the crafting. For this one, we're going to need seven strings, which is pretty expensive, but we already saved a nice amount of plant fiber, so we can craft a couple of these, and voila! Both of them can be activated anytime for stamina when equipped on your character. Very important, if you come across gear during your adventures, you want to visit the blacksmith and check out the Enhance Equipment tab, as right here, you can enchant everything to make it even more powerful. Look at that, we currently have 51 runes. If we upgrade the longbow, it will deal plus for fire magic damage. We have a secondary slot with increased critical strike chance and a third attribute bonus with more fire damage. The scythe we found earlier with common quality has only one upgrade slot while the shepherd staff comes with two. So the higher the rarity of the item, the more you can upgrade it, the more powerful it becomes. But be sure to check out the level so this one is level 3, that's level 3, and this one is level 3 as well. But especially the forest longbow, wow, we're pretty lucky we found this one. It has a lot of base damage, so it's going to be amazing for your early adventures. Short bows are in general pretty weak, while I like to have a one-handed weapon as well in combination with a shield. If you want to have a sweet farm for some pretty cool weapons to pick up early, I can definitely recommend you this spot right here. If you have access to the glider and the grappling hook, wow, it's gonna be OP basically. But if you're standing to the northeastern part of this home area, this is where you will find a little watchtower out of the shroud. If we jump down, j press jump second time, we will start gliding. We can basically reach that tower in no time. If you right click, you will cancel the flight, but not only does this give you access to a sweet treasure chest, but right here you can also harvest some salt. This is also an ingredient necessary for many different crafts, but hey, right behind that, we also have a little treasure room right here. Let's quickly make some space for the treasure inside. If we interact with it, look at that, we find a masterful maze, which we can, if we want, further enhance because it has one upgrade slot but we can also salvage this for nine runes if we turn around 180 degrees we can look up right here interact with a grappling hook to instantly get upstairs and this will also get us out of the shroud it's important to know that when inside the shroud you can't use a quick trap so it's locked right now so another pro tip use your pickaxe to scale terrain get upstairs a little bit easier, then use the grappler hook, and voila! Now if we open up the map, we can use this fast travel. So we got our hands on some sweet loot right next to our door, but let me make this even better. If you're playing single player and return to the main menu, this will reset all the treasure chests in the game, everything in your world basically. I already hear some people think out loud, wow, this is super cheesy. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it is. But at the same time, I think also an essential mechanic to restore the world to its full glory get all the nature back in place as imagine like 15 people chopping down trees on your server 24 7 there will be no tree left to harvest especially if you're new to a world where you can't find any treasure because all the boxes are already looted this is going to become pretty frustrating but let's check out this treasure chest one more time to save some stamina you can always just let yourself fall down for the majority of the distance Wow, look at that. This time we got our hands on an ornate wooden bow, seven power, but of epic quality. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I still prefer my forest longbow because it has much higher raw damage, while this one actually comes with increased backstab damage and critical hit damage. So it can be pretty cool to use. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Everything you need to know to get started with Enshrouded. All the essentials to be ready for any adventure ahead. Right now, I am also very curious what you guys think of the game so far. Be sure to share your opinion about it in the comments down below as well. Do you plan on building a massive castle with your friends? Or maybe just look forward to exploring everything the Early Access build has to offer. If you found this video helpful, please do hit that like button. You have no idea how much you help out the channel with it. Oh, and I almost forgot before we wrap up this video, be sure to check out my personal link to G Portal to get yourself a nice discount during checkout. Save some money, support the channel while you're at it. I think that's an awesome thing to do. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as there is a lot more coming your way. This is literally the eye before the storm as I have plenty of guides prepared for you. But yeah, I want to wish you a lot of fun with the game. Thank you for watching. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.